welcome everyone to science era in this video we're going to discuss homeostasis the learning outcomes for these videos will be define homeostasis and explain its importance and then we're going to define negative and positive feedback and describe their roles in maintaining homeostasis and normal body function let's begin Starting from the definition of homeostasis, homeostasis is definition defined as the ability of the body to maintain relatively stable internal conditions despite the change in external environment. The literal translation of homeostasis is unchanging. Homeo means same and stasis means standing still, but the term does not really mean an unchanging state. As we said, it is defined as ability of body to maintain relatively stable internal condition despite the changes in the external environment. Two systems which control this are nervous system or neurological system and endocrine system which use electrical signals transmitted by nerves or blood-borne hormones respectively as information carriers are responsible for maintaining homeostasis inside the body. Components of homeostasis There are three main components of homeostasis receptor, control center and effector. These are the three main components of the homeostat homeostatic control system. So let's look at first one, receptor. The receptor is a type of sensor that monitors and responds to changes in environment. It responds to such changes called stimuli by sending information to the second component, the control center. Along the efferent pathway, it may help to remember the information traveling along efferent pathway approaches the control center. Next is control center. This determines the level at which a variable is to be maintained. This component analyzes the information it receives and then determines the appropriate response or course of action. The third and the last component is effector. Effector provides the mean of control center's response to the stimulus. Information flows from the control center to effector along efferent pathway. Efferent information exists from the control center. The result of the response then feed back to influence the stimulus either by reducing the amount of change so that the whole control mechanism is shut off which we called negative feedback or by increasing the amount of change so that the reaction continues at an even faster rate which is also called positive feedback. So components of homeostasis have five steps stimulus receptor input output and response stimulus is produced when there is change in variable receptor detects that change then the information is sent along afferent pathway to control center from there information is sent along efferent pathway to effector which is the last and third component of the homeostasis then response is produced response of effector feeds back to reduce the effect of stimulus and return variable to homeostatic level next we're going to discuss is feedback mechanism there are two types of feedback mechanism negative feedback mechanism and positive feedback mechanism Negative feedback mechanism, in order to maintain an ideal amount of whatever is being controlled, a stimulus induces an opposing output. The goal is to reduce or eliminate the initial stimulation. In positive feedback, a regulatory process in which the output 
pushes the system to produce more output increase the quantity of change which which accelerates the reaction pace because they amplify the original stimulus these processes are uncommon so in the negative feedback the goal is to reduce the initial stimulus whereas in positive feedback it is opposite the output is produced even in more amount or they amplify the original stimulus some example of positive feedback include child birth where stimulus is increase in contraction the response will be hypothalamus secretes oxytocin and the result will be increase in contraction even more other examples of positive feedback includes menstruation lactation and blood clotting in lactation the child feeding stimulates milk production which causes further feeding continues until baby stops feeding blood clotting platelet release clotting factor which cause more platelets to aggregate at the site of injury in the case of childbirth the stretching of urine uterine walls cause contraction that further stretches the wall this continues until the birthing occurs so these are all the examples of positive feedback which involves a response that reinforces the changes detected it functions to amplify those changes next is negative feedback example of negative feedback include increase in the heart rate so in this case stimulus will be increase the in the heart rate response will be baroreceptors in the blood will detect the blood pressure which will rise resulting in the decrease resulting in body decreasing the heart rate some other examples of negative feedbacks are thermoregulation blood sugar level and osmoregulation in thermoregulation if body temperature changes mechanism are induced to restore normal level in blood sugar regulation insulin lowers blood glucose when levels are high glucagon raises blood glucose when levels are low in osmoregulation adh is secreted to retain water when dehydrated and its release is inhibited when they when the body is hydrated so negative feedback involves a response that is a reverse of the change detected it function to reduce the change now that we have learned about homeostasis let's test our knowledge so the first question is when we say that body demonstrate homeostasis do we mean the condition in the body are unchanging yes or no explain your answer so when we say that body demonstrate homeostasis it doesn't mean that condition and bodies are unchanging so the answer is no we mean by saying that homeostasis is occurring in the body we mean that they vary within a narrow and regulated range next question is when we begin to become dehydrated we usually get thirsty which causes us to drink liquids is the thirst sensation part of negative or positive feedback control system defend your choice so we say that thirst is a part of a negative feedback system thirst prods us to drink fluids the response which in turn causes the thirst sensation to decrease and end if it were to be a positive feedback mechanism we would become even more thirsty so the stimulus for drinking would increase in the positive feedback but the reverse will happen in the negative feedback because we don't feel thirsty after drinking water we say 
that it is an example of negative feedback system. This is all about homeostasis. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in a comment section. Thank you.